Oh, I am I'm delighted and honored to participate in this investiture ceremony uh, for Dean Tamara Lawson. Dean Lawson and I first met at a demonstration. It was in Washington, D.C. 20 years ago in the spring. And I was a, at the time, I was a professor at Penn State Dickinson School of Law. And she had just completed six years as a prosecutor in Nevada and was now at Georgetown University Law Center pursuing an LLM degree. The affirmative action cases of Gruder and Gratz against the University of Michigan were slated to be argued before the Supreme Court. And SALT, the Society of American Law Teachers, had organized a contingent of law professors and students to participate in a rally at the Supreme Court that day. They suggested we faculty wear our academic robes so we would have a visible presence as a group. And following the rally, we marched from the Supreme Court to the Lincoln Memorial. And so it was on Constitution Avenue, en route to the Lincoln Memorial, that a young woman came up to me and asked, are you a law professor? <laughs> I said, yes. And she said she was interested in transitioning her career into legal academia and would welcome some insights into the process. This was before the AALS and various uh, law prof blog sites um, had much information on this. And she was particularly interested, how does it really work in practice? You know, what, what are the real nuts and bolts of doing this? Well, we've been in touch ever since, uh, sharing thoughts, experiences, ideas. So she landed a position in Miami and set about bringing her experience as a lawyer into the classroom in brilliant ways that guided students and developed their critical thinking skills in criminal law, procedure, evidence, and race and the law. Her commitment to excellence shown from the very beginning. In her first year of law teaching, the students voted her Professor of the Year for upper class students. In her second year of law teaching, the students voted her Professor of the Year for <laughs> upper class students. And I could go on and on. But in my few minutes, I want to highlight a particular aspect of Dean Lawson's work. A key mark of her professional life has been the development and nourishing of community. One way she has done this is through building networks, networks that provide venues for information sharing, that serve as laboratories for generating ideas and discussing strategies, and that are firm sources of support for each other within the networks. In turn, these networks act as impact multipliers in that the strong bonds formed further strengthen the work being done and is so powerfully reflected in a key theme of Dean Lawson's work over the years, these networks build community. Now, this resonates strongly with an important principle in my field of law, which is international human rights law. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adopted by the UN 75 years ago this year, contains a list of rights that we all have as human beings. One critique of the, de of the declaration is that it has an overemphasis on individualism, seemingly reflecting a disconnection between people through its litany of individual rights, with no sense of human interconnectedness. But this discounts a clause in the declaration that notes a key aspect of the interconnectedness of human beings, Article 29. When the UN Commission on Human Rights was drafting the Universal Declaration, among the people they asked for input on what rights to include was Mahatma Gandhi. In his response to the commission, Gandhi replied in so many words that the question wasn't so much what rights do people have, but what duties do people owe each other? If people fulfilled their duties to each other, then people's rights would be respected. And indeed, the drafters of the Declaration understood that rights do not exist in a vacuum, but that rights are interrelated with duties. And so Article 29 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights begins, everyone has duties. But to whom? Okay. It states, everyone has duties to the community. But it doesn't stop there. It articulates just why the community is so important. It says, everyone has duties to the community in which alone the free and full development of their personality is possible. So it is only within community, within rights-respecting community, that everyone can fully enjoy their human rights. 
This clause calls on people to recognize that we are all interconnected. The full development of the human person depends on rights respecting communities. Now, earlier I referred to the networks that Dean Lawson has nurtured as impact multipliers. Dean Lawson, you are an impact multiplier. <laughs> uh, through her work, she has been bending the arc toward justice through her commitment to excellence, her leadership in so many ways, and through her centering and nourishing of concentric circles of community. It's been such an inspiration and joy to see her in action over these past 20 years, and I look forward to seeing her accomplishments for many more years to come.